All right. Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Shay Masterson with the with the Office of National Scholarships Advisement. I'm so excited you could join us today for our Public Service Awards information session. So on our screen right now, you should be seeing um, our Truman Scholar from ASU from this past 2024 cycle. You'll hear a little bit more about the Truman um, Scholarship in today's session, as well as some other awards. But just a quick note, all of our photos, they're not stock photos. They're not random photos. They're not just scholar recipients, but they are ASU students and alumni who have previously won the awards that we're going to be talking about today. So just a quick plug there. Um, give you an idea of what we'll be discussing today. So I'm going to give you a brief brief overview, excuse me, of the Office of National Scholarships Advisement, or ONSA, that I represent in case you're not familiar with our office already. And then there's really four public service awards we're going to spend most of the time talking about today. The Truman Scholarship, the PPIA Scholar Fellowship, the Udall Scholarship, and the Voyager Scholarship. So we'll go into a little bit more detail about each one of these. And I'll also share some resources with you when we're done of where you can find additional awards that may interest you as well. So it's not just these four awards. Those are just the ones that we're going to focus most heavily on today. Um, I do want to invite you to type into the chat at any point if you have questions. Um, I will try to keep them answered in real time. And if it's a question that I'm going to be addressing momentarily, I'll kind of hold off on it. But otherwise, I'll try to answer those questions as they come through the chat. And then I'll save time at the end for que additional questions as well. Um, and then we'll wrap up today with some next steps or suggestions for how you move forward if you're interested in exploring and eventually applying for any of the awards that you hear about today. So first up, national scholarships, national fellowships, awards, programs. Um, they're all called different things depending on who named it, but our office chooses this, the National Scholarships Nomenclature. Um, and just to give you an idea of what that means in terms of the hundred or so awards that we advise on, um, they're all different in terms of what they provide, who's eligible, when you're eligible, how to apply, all of that. Um, but there are some things that, some commonalities that kind of classify all of the National Scholarships fellowships our office focuses on into like kind of one um, grouping. Um, first off, the funding. It is not funded by ASU. So even though we are part of ASU here and everybody joining us today is part of the ASU community, these awards are open to, um, are, are funded by entities outside of the university. So oftentimes they're funded by federal agencies or international government, foreign governments, international organizations, private foundations. So these um, entities outside of the university that are funding and managing these particular programs. Um, and because they come from outside of ASU, they also uh, accept an applicant pool that is from across the country and sometimes across the world. Um, typically, everything we advise on, you have to be a student at a U.S.-based university to apply, um, and some of them you can even be students from universities elsewhere in the world when you apply. Um, so the applicant pool, the potential applicant pool, is very large, um, even beyond the ASU ecosystem. Um, the awards we advise on are very generous in ter terms of the financial support they provide. That generosity ranges from $5,000 to um, hundreds of thousands of dollars, depending on the particular award. Um, but regardless of the financial amount that comes with them, they are also experiential. So they're, you're getting much more than the financial benefit through um, participating in any one of these types of awards. That experience might be studying abroad, it might be learning a language, it might be conducting research, either assisting research or conducting your own research, it might be doing some kind of professional development in your field of interest, you might receive a mentor as part of the fellowship program, networking opportunities, um, whatever it is, each one of these opportunities comes with much more than just the financial benefit. It comes with some kind of experience that is going to really be transformative in your overall journey as you move forward in trying to achieve your ultimate goals. Um, the ones that we're going to talk about today have a, a 
focus on some kind of public service realm specifically, but there's more awards out there that we advise on than just the ones that we'll focus on today. Um, every single uh, scholarship in our kind of portfolio that we advise on has some kind of mission or purpose that is trying to be fulfilled. Um, so the funding entity who has started the program or the managing entity that is running the program is trying, they have some kind of mission or purpose or vision in mind, and they are using this scholarship as a way to, or the way to fulfill that mission. So for instance, the U.S. Department of State is a large um, funder of national scholarships. There's many awards that are funded by the U.S. Department of State, not all of them, but many of them. Um, in a nutshell, the U.S. Department of State's mission is U.S. diplomacy abroad, right? So um, diplomatic relationships between the United States and other countries, as well as keeping the U U.S. citizens abroad safe, right? That in a nutshell um, is kind of what the U.S. Department of State focuses on. And so whatever award they have funded, it is in some way seen as a way to further those diplomacy efforts, further keep U.S. interests um, and, and people safe and um, kind of improving abroad, right? So any kind of fellowship funded by them, that, that's kind of the underlying mission that they're trying to fulfill. The mission's gonna vary by each award and each funder, but that just gives you an idea. Um, and all of these awards, because of um, who's funding them, because of how many people are able to apply and because of the huge benefits that come with them, they are pretty competitive. Um, Things, some of the things we advise on, only like 1% to 3% of those who apply actually end up receiving the award. Some it's a little bit more like say 25 to 30%, but nothing we advise on can we say the majority of people who apply will receive the award. Um, and that's part of why we're here is to help you with that. So those are the kinds of awards we focus on in our office and how we provide support around these awards to ASU students and alumni is through informational sessions like this one where we just kind of want to share the general information with those who might be interested in these kinds of awards. Um, but then it goes a little bit further than that. Either in small groups or individually, we give guidance and advising um, in terms of exploring awards that you want to apply for, determining when you want to apply for them, and then the bulk of our work is actually helping you with the application process itself. So these applications tend to be a little bit um, lengthy, intensive, maybe overwhelming. Um, so once you have decided to apply for any of these awards, we are there to support you through that entire process. And most of that comes in with the written portions of the application. So we will we will provide general guidance, suggestions, tips, as well as individualized feedback on the written components of any of these applications that you're working on. Um, and so we're kind of like writing consultants. Um, we're scholarship advisors, we're supporters, we're cheerleaders, all of that. But the bulk of our time is actually spent doing um, written um, consultation and support and advice. Um, if you apply for an award that requires an, an interview like the Truman Scholarship does, we'll help you prepare for the interview as well. Um, not all awards have an interview component, and even if they do, you won't necessarily be selected for the interview stage of the um, process. But if you are, we'll support you with that preparation as well. And some awards do require what's called campus nomination or endorsement. This means that you have to be given kind of the stamp of approval from your university in order to be considered on the national level for the particular scholarship. Um, we don't decide who gets nominated or endorsed. We just manage the process in our office. So what that means is for any award that requires this nomination or endorsement, you submit your application materials um, in their entirety by a campus deadline, which is usually about a month to two months before the national deadline. 
um, there will be a campus committee that convenes to review all of the applications for consideration. Um, and then they may interview the candidates. They may not. It depends on the particular award. And then they ultimately select who receives that nomination from the university. And we relay that information as well as any feedback from the committee to you as the applicant whether you receive the uh, nomination or not. For some of these awards, we are limited on how many we can nominate, like Truman, like Udall, which you'll hear about today. And then there's other awards that we don't focus on today, but things like the Fulbright US Student Program, where we're not limited as a university. So as many students and alumni who apply and are eligible and have a strong compelling application can receive the university nomination. And again, we just manage that process. Um, so those are the kinds of awards we focus on in ONSET, and that is the kind of support we provide to you if and when you pursue any of these kinds of awards. So let's dive into the topic at hand for today, public service awards. So when I say public service, in a nutshell, that means those who want to have a career that focuses on, in some way, the public good, the greater public good. So you want to do something in your future career that helps people, either in your individual field or in your community or in society at large, right? But in some way, you want to serve the public good. So that could be running for office. That's what's often thought of when we say public service, but that's only one of the kind of purviews. Um, it could be working for the government in some non-elected official, local, state, federal. It could be um, working on an international scale with like an NGO. It could be working with a nonprofit organization or foundation. Um, and in some case, even working for a private corporation, but in their like philanthropy or service kind of um, realm. Um, some are more specialized in terms of in terms of your public service interests, what field do you want to be in? And some are more broad. So the first one we're going to talk about is the Harry S. Truman School scholarship, which is kind of, um, it's the it's the oldest of the awards that we're going to talk about today and kind of the premier scholarship for those who, who want to pursue a public service career. Um, and so what the scholarship provides to those who want to provide to pursue a public service career is an opportunity to receive $30,000 in funding towards your graduate plans. So you apply as a third year undergraduate student or a student who has one year remaining after this year in your undergraduate studies. That's when you apply for the scholarship, but the financial benefit comes when you actually go to graduate school. Um, and that's most often seen as like a master's degree or a law degree. Um, very occasionally a medical degree, although usually folks who want to go the medical, like get an MD route, go through different avenues than the Truman Scholarship. Um, typically, though, it's not going to be like an MBA or something that you're really pursuing in an effort to um, make a lot of money or do good things for yourself. There's nothing wrong with that as your goal, but they're looking for folks who want to do something for, the, again, that greater good, that public service. So, if you have that in mind for your future career, you want to make an impact in some significant way for the public good, and you want to pursue graduate school as part of that journey, then you may want to apply for the Truman Scholarship. In addition to that $30,000 in graduate funding, most graduate programs, when you apply and are admitted as a Truman Scholar, will also offer you much more funding than that base $30,000 in funding. So unfortunately, $30,000, it's a lot of money, but it, for a lot of graduate programs, it won't go that far. So just know that it, um, that you would likely get more offers of more funding than that $30,000 as well. But as I said earlier, it comes with more than just the financial benefit. So as a Truman Scholar, you participate in the, their Leadership Week, which is where they bring all of the scholars together for a week over the summer to do leadership development, networking, professional development, um, and begin the advising and mentorship process of being a Truman Scholar. So you 
also get a lot of, as you go through your final year of undergraduate studies and even beyond, a lot of advice, support, and guidance from the program on kind of further solidifying whatever your future plans are for your career and for graduate school. So help in applying to graduate school, exploring graduate programs, and just kind of further solidifying your path. And with that also comes oftentimes internship opportunities for your final year of undergraduate studies as well. Um, so in a nutshell, that's what the Truman Scholarship provides to students who are selected. Um, this is one award that we are required to nominate or endorse, and we are limited on how many we can nominate or endorse from the university. Um, the Truman Scholarship is open right now. It typically opens in early to mid-September. And then the campus deadline this year, if you were wanting to apply, is November 25th. If you want to apply in a future year, then you can expect it to be around the same time mid to late November in any given year. So again, Truman Scholarship, kind of premier scholarship for those who want to pursue public service careers um, in any kind of field, typically. I haven't seen any questions pop through. Before I move on to the next award, are there any questions about what I've discussed so far? Give it just a minute. Just a reminder, please, please feel free to ask any questions you may have in the chat as you have them or save them till the end if you'd prefer. All right, the next award we'll talk about is a little bit more narrow in terms of what your kind of field of focus is within public service, but it's also for those who wanna pursue public service careers and graduate school as part of their public service journey. But you have to be interested in like public policy, public administration, and or international affairs as your area of focus for your graduate degree and ultimate career. If that's the case for you, then you would also apply during your third year of an undergraduate studies or your penultimate year when you have one year remaining. Um, and it's a grad school preparation program that happens over the summer at one of the top tier programs in the country for public policy administration or international affairs. This year, they're, house, they're hosting um, the June, the summer fellowship at Harvard, um, Berkeley, Princeton, University of Michigan, and um, I apologize, I'm blanking on the fifth one, but there's five different sites where they host these grad school preparation programs over the summer, which is about six weeks where you go there, you take grad level courses, and then each site provides additional support in terms of preparing and exploring uh, preparing for and exploring your future grad school plans and career plans. So that might be a grad school fair. It might be GRE prep. It might be field trips to particular locations where there's folks doing that kind of work. Um, so a lot of different opportunities within that summer as well. Um, and it's funded for you to participate in that that full six week program. And then in addition, you receive a minimum $5,000 scholarship towards graduate school for pursuing a graduate degree in public policy, public administration, or international affairs at one of the PPIA consortium schools. That includes the five schools that host the Summer Institute, but it includes an additional like 55 or so other programs across the country in this these fields as well. Um, so it's a minimum of $5,000 in funding, but actually most PPIA alum, uh, fellowship alum are actively recruited by the consortium schools and offered much more funding towards those graduate programs, including in some cases, full funding to pursue those graduate programs. So you could potentially get, you know, um, a public policy degree from Harvard for free, right? So uh, really, it's a great experience that you engage in over the summer, but then leads to a lot of opportunities for funding for your future grad plans. And then they can also lead to internship opportunities during your senior year. Um, and again, just kind of further solidify for you your, your area of interest and plans for the future. 
Um, this application also opens in September. Um, so around this time of the year, it's already open for this year. And then typically it's always due on November 1st. Um, so, and that is the deadline for this year. So if you are in your penultimate year of undergraduate studies, and this sounds interesting, you would wanna get started on that application right now um, and know that it would be due in about five weeks from now on November 1st. If it would be in a future year, just keep in mind that that's the general time timeline for PPIA. PPIA, the Public Policy and International Affairs Program, so they have the consortium, which is 60 or so graduate programs um, that are, offer degrees in these fields. There's the summer fellowship, which is what we're talking about. And then they also offer public service weekends, which are these weekend um, experiences that happen at different universities uh, that are part of the consortium. And they have, um, some of them have a special topic that they focus on within the realm of policy or international affairs, but they're an additional option, uh, additional way for you to get further exposure and knowledge and experience kind of in the public service realm. Some of them happen in person and some of them happen virtually. And for those in-person ones, there's often an application you can submit to have it funded for you to participate in that weekend. Um, would healthcare administration and policy degrees qualify? Typically, yes. You would want to look at the consortium schools and see if they have policy degrees that were relevant to healthcare administration specifically. But typically, yes, that would, in a nutshell, um, be applicable. It would just be about do, do the programs offer that kind of specialty. Okay. And thank you for that question, and please continue to ask any questions as you have them. All right, next up is the UDAL Undergraduate Scholarship. So this is actually one of the few awards we advise on that does provide you with funding towards your undergraduate expenses, if that is something that you're in need of as well. So as a UDAL scholar, you would receive up to $7,000 in funding towards your academic experience expenses for the following year, and you can apply as a second and or third year undergraduate student, meaning they want you to have already a year of undergraduate studies under your belt and at least a year remaining of your undergraduate studies, right? So in that kind of window, depending on your exact number of years in your academic plan. Um, but this is, this is one scholarship program and everybody who is selected receives the same benefits, but it's kind of three different scholarship programs in terms of who the eligible candidates are and like what they're looking for in an eligible candidate. So one of those categories is students who are focused on environmental issues. So if your kind of focus in terms of public service is you really want to be um, having an impact on environmental issues through research or policy, um, those kinds of things, then you could apply for the UDAL scholarship under the environmental track. Or if you are a Native American student and you are interested in issues that are relevant to Native American populations and tribes, either in policy issues or healthcare issues, then you would, and policy could be environmental policy, it could be education policy, it could be legal policy, it could be any number of kind of policy issues. But if you're interested in policy issues as they relate to Native American populations or healthcare issues as they relate to Native American populations, then you could apply for the UDAL scholarship in one of those categories as well. Um, in addition to the financial benefit you get as a UDAL scholar, you also attend their scholar orientation, which is a four day long kind of leadership professional development networking conference, kind of like the leadership week for the Truman scholars. Um, and the scholar orientation happens also over the summer um, and expenses are paid for you to participate in that orientation. And then you also become part of the alumni network, which is, um, at this point, let's see, the program's been around for like 30 years. So you have 30 years worth of folks who are now doing the things that you say you want to do, whether in environmental issues, um, 
uh, policy issues relating to Native American populations or healthcare issues relating to Native American populations. Um, and these alumni are available to you through the network to, um, you know, talk to, to be mentored by, even learn about internship or job opportunities, help build towards your future success. Um, this one is also one where we uh, you have to apply for nomination or endorsement. We are also limited for this one on how many we can nominate or endorse in each category. And this application does typically open in October, so it should be opening soon, but it's a longer application window than the other ones that we've discussed so far. The campus deadline won't be until February. Um, so it's usually like the end of the fall semester and then into the beginning of the spring semester when you actively work on the application, and then you submit for that campus endorsement in February. Um, we don't have the exact de dates set yet because we kind of wait until the application is opening so we know what the final deadline is. But there's the Udall scholarship. This is one that you can apply for either year as well as both years. So if you apply your first year of eligibility and you don't receive it, you can reapply the second year. If you apply the first year and you do receive it, you can also reapply the second year if you're needing the additional funding. Um, you already have all of the other same benefits, um, so you wouldn't need to reapply to get the access to the Scholar Orientation or Alumni Network, but you would if you wanted the additional funding for that following year. And last but not least for today is the Voyager Scholarship. This is a relatively new one. Um, they just announced their third cohort. The first cohort just graduated this past spring with their bachelor's degrees, and their third cohort was announced um, just this last month. So the Voyager Scholarship is like the Truman Scholarship. It's for students who want to pursue any kind of public service career, whatever field or interest that may be, um, whether that be social work, law, policy, international affairs, um, healthcare, right? They want to pursue some kind of public service career. And um, if you're selected, you receive funding towards your final two years of undergraduate studies. So this is specifically for second year undergrads, and they want you to have two full years of undergraduate study remaining to qualify as a second year undergrad. So again, regardless of how many years is, are part of your overall academic plan, you need to have two years remaining when you apply for the Voyager Scholarship. Um, and then you receive $50,000 in funding for the two remaining years that you have split between the two years. So it would be $25,000 per year up to that amount. If you don't need that amount, they, then you won't receive the full amount. Um, and then they also uh, give you guidance and preparation and support to pursue a summer voyage for that final summer between your um, junior and senior year. And this voyage can be anywhere in the world. And it's an opportunity, whether that be an internship, research, volunteering, but some kind of opportunity that is relevant to your areas of interest in terms of public service. Um, and then they'll pay you a stipend to engage in that opportunity. And then you also receive housing at an Airbnb location during that summer voyage. Um, very generous program. And on top of the financial benefit, they also bring you together for a fall leadership conference where they bring all of the scholars from that cohort together for some leadership development, networking. They also offer ongoing um, kind of professional development and a mentorship throughout, especially that first year in the program to build towards your summer voyage, but then also beyond that. Um, and this one is the only one that we've discussed today that does require you to have a demonstrated financial need to be eligible. So the rest of them um, either don't look at financial need, need at all, or they will look at it, but it's not the final determining factor, like it's not required for you to have a financial need to apply. For the Voy Voyager Scholarship, it is required for you to have a financial need for your academic expenses. Um, they do allow for some flexibility in defining how that financial need is um, defined by you, but you do need to have that financial need um, 
for this one. This one um, will typically open in January and be due sometime in March. You do not apply for nomination or endorsement. You apply directly to the program, um, but we just kind of have to wait and see until the application opens to see what the deadline will be. So those are the four main awards, depending on where you're at in your academic journey and what kind of your area of focus in wanting to pursue public service would be. You could apply for one or more of these awards. There's potential, depending on your particular area of focus and some eligibility factors. Potentially, you could apply for all of them at various times, um, but hopefully at least one of these piqued your interest. And if not, or if they did and you wanna hear about even more, you can go to this QR code and you'll find a, a further list of awards that, um, they these awards are listed that we've talked about and other awards that may not be only for those who wanna pursue public service careers, but they would also be a great benefit to anyone who wanted to pursue a public service career. Some of them are global awards that can take you international, either while you're still an undergrad or after you graduate. Some of them can provide you with um, graduate funding, depending on where you want to go to graduate school and what you want to study. Um, some are, are very uh, specific, like PPIA is, and some are more broad, like Truman is. So it just kind of depends. So there's quite a few other awards that you can um, peruse on that list through the QR code, um, as well as I just typed the direct link into the chat, if that's easier for you to that Google document. Additionally, you can go to our website, onsa.asu.edu slash scholarships, which I just put into the chat as well. And that's where you can find a more complete list of awards that we advise on, including the ones we've covered today, including the ones that are on that Google document. But this is a filterable list. So you can apply filters based on your academic level. You can apply filters based on what is the thing that you're looking for? Are you looking for an international experience? Are you looking for a summer opportunity? Are you looking for general academic funding like Voyager provides? Um, so you can apply different things like that as well, as well as your field of interest. Although some things like these are specific to maybe public service, but not one specific field. And some things aren't specific to one field. Um, but you can use that database as a resource um, to explore additional options that our office advises on as well. So as you move forward, considering applying for any number of these awards, some things to think about, again, each one is a little bit different in terms of who's eligible and the exact selection criteria, but in general, readers or selection panels for national scholarships are looking for a few different things um, that can vary slightly, but under these umbrellas. So first off, they all are merit-based. So they will look at your academic and scholarly record. This includes your GPA, your transcripts, the rigor of the courses you've taken, especially if it's courses relevant to the area of interest, although not everything is always um, major specific or course specific. Um, but your scholarly record also goes beyond that. So if research is an, a relevant part of your journey, then having um, research experience, being an assistant on any published articles, those kinds of things, doing presentations at conferences of your um, academic work, those kinds of things also contribute to the scholarly record that they consider. They're also, especially the public service awards, but all of the awards we advise on are looking for service-oriented folks. So folks that not just say that they uh, that service is important to them, but have that demonstrated through their current and past experiences. So volunteering, being involved in clubs and organizations, whether that's at the university or in the broader community, um, whether that... And, that doesn't always have to be explicitly related to your area of interest that you're applying to the fellowship for, but you can have additional interests and um, things that you are 
passionate about and enjoy doing and care about doing, um, but they do want to see folks that are service oriented and have demonstrated leadership. So demonstrated leadership does not necessarily mean I was the president of each club, I was the chair of every committee. Um, it can mean that, but it's more than that. Sometimes the best leader in the room is the one without a title. So when we say demonstrated leadership with, with or without a title, they're looking at you to explain times in which you've been able to bring a group that's divided together and find consensus, to lead a group to a solution, to a problem, um, to be supportive to people of varying backgrounds or beliefs or ideas, right? So these are the kinds of things that you talk about in your written statements to demonstrate the type of leader that you have been and that you want to become. Um, and that's really what they're looking at. And that can be done through academics, through extracurriculars, through jobs, through internships, through research experiences, through family obligations. It can be done in any number of ways. Um, and then, as we said at the very beginning, these are all mission driven. They're trying to fulfill a mission. And so they want to see that you have a shared purpose um, or vision or mission as they do that you wanna see in your chosen field or in society at large or in your particular community. So kind, some kind of shared purpose and mission between you as the applicant and the, the funding agency that's providing this scholarship. Um, and last but not least, they want to know that you have the potential to have the positive impact in the future that you say you want to have. So you can talk about things that you've done in the past or are doing, cur doing currently on a sm small or large scale that can show them that you have the potential to take initiative, to drive positive change, to lead a group of people, those kinds of things. Um, and then they see that this fellowship or opportunity is going to be part of your journey in helping accelerate you towards having that positive impact on the world that you aim to have. Okay, so it's all a part of your journey and they see this fellowship as being a part of that. So. If you would like to apply for any of the awards we've discussed today or any of the, the ones that you find on our database, um, some just general suggestions as you move forward to kind of explore those options. First, stay focused on what your goal is. If um, environmental issues are important to you, look at Udall. If that's not really your area of focus, then you don't need to try to fit yourself into the Udall box. That's okay. Not every scholarship or fellowship is going to be for every individual based on your objectives, goals, what's most important to you, right? Hopefully all of us find the environment important, but that's not necessarily what we're focused on and, and trying to make a change at and want our career to be in, right? So just stay focused on whatever your objective or objectives are. And if you're further developing them, that's okay too. That's all a part of the journey. All of these experiences are going to to help you build towards fine tuning your focus and objective, but stay focused on that and don't try to fit yourself um, as a, a square applicant into a round um, uh, hole of an application of a fellowship, right? So just stay focused on your objective and look at the fellowships that have a shared purpose or mission. Um, any fellowships that are of interest to you, ones that we've covered today, ones that are on our database or on that list of awards that um, I shared with you, make note of what their eligibility requirements and deadlines are. So are you eligible now or will you be in the future based on your academic level? Some have very explicit eligibility in terms of citizenship status, in terms of GPA, in terms of demonstrated financial need um, in terms of the kinds of activities you may or may not be involved in, right? Um, and some are a little bit more broad in terms of those eligibilities, but no any eligi specific eligibility requirements for any particular award and the deadline, when you would need to apply for it. 
for most of the awards we advise on for undergraduate students, it's typically a two to three month window before the deadline of when you would work on that application with our office. Um, for the postgraduate ones, for things after you have your bachelor's degree, either to pursue graduate studies or more of an experience after you graduate, those usually have a little bit of a longer application window and you work on those for a little bit longer with our office, but it all just depends. Um, and for any award that you're interested in, a great idea is to read the scholar profiles of the most recent recipients. And those are usually all posted on the specific fellowship or scholarship website. And those profiles will give you a good idea of the things that the people who ultimately win these awards have done and want to do. And that will further help you determine does this award align with kind of your overall interests? Um, would you be competitive compared to these applicants uh, or these previous candidates? And also, if you're trying to build towards that, it can give you some ideas of things that you might want to pursue in building towards being competitive for any of these awards. So, as you move forward, again, I, I shared the direct link to our scholarship database, but if you just go to our general website, onsa.asu.edu, you can get to the scholarship database with that arrow, um, that top left arrow pointed um, up at the top for the scholarship database. And again, you can filter by particular um, academic level, eligibility requirements, areas of interest. If and when you're ready, you can schedule an advising appointment with us through our website for the very aptly named button, make an appointment. So you can schedule a general appointment just to discuss more in depth one on one. What are your goals? And I can help you explore ideas that would align with those goals. Or once you're actually applying for a specific award like Truman or PPIA, um, you can schedule an appointment to get advice on that specific application. Um, and the, either kinds of those app, the appointments can be done through that make an appointment button. Um, if you haven't already, I would also encourage you to sign up for our weekly bulletin. It is a, um, you know, it's a select in bulletin. It's not like the ones you automatically receive at ASU or through your college. Um, so if you want to receive regular updates on what applications have opened, what deadlines are coming up, and what other events like this information session we have going on, then you can sign up for that weekly bulletin right there to kind of stay in the know. So that is all I have for you today. Thank you again so much for joining us. Um, I hope to see and meet with you all soon to discuss your goals and which awards you might want to be applying for to support you in applying for any of them. Um, you'll work with either myself or somebody else in the office, depending on the specific award you'll apply for. But if you want to have the general conversation about your goals and which awards to apply for, we'll definitely meet soon with that general appointment. Um, otherwise, we're, we are done for the day, so I'm going to go ahead and stop our recording.